Nvidia might have to get rid of another graphics card. AMD is looking to double their VRAM and there's a lot to talk about with Intel's GPUs. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, April 22nd, 2025. We're gonna start off today talking about some unfortunate news for Team Green, who is now looking to stop the selling of the RTX 5090D over in China. In case you're not familiar, the 5090D is the variant of the 5090 that they specifically produced in order to comply with export restrictions on their graphics cards to be sold in that region. And now after they had their H20 AI accelerators banned by the US government, reports are coming out that Nvidia is preempting another ban of the RTX 5090D by suspending the sales of this GPU, essentially their flagship GPU over in that region. So allegedly this is a precautionary move because nothing's been officially disclosed as of yet. There have been a couple AIB partners like Colorful and Palette who have already stopped selling selling it. And so NVIDIA is just looking to prepare to uh, make less money elsewhere outside of the US right now, making it difficult for them moving forward. But if you're looking for a new PC, you know who's going to make it easy? Today's video sponsor, Falcon Northwest. Oh man, my stinky old PC ain't working again. This SSD is older than radioactive by Imagine Dragons. What am I going to do? You could get a new PC. A whole new PC? But where? <laughs> What would you look see here? How did it knock? A brand new PC from Falcon Northwest. Crazy how small this case is. And it still has room for a 5080 Founders Edition. Falcon Northwest, I think I've heard of them, right? They're the first company that specifically designed PCs for gaming back in 1992. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they're also the ones that are still independently owned and operated by their original founder. Hmm, yeah, I think that they're the ones that, in addition to making this Tiki here, they also have a mid tower called the Town and a small form factor called the frag box. The Tiki takes up less space on my desk and can still handle up to a 5090. I think they're also the ones that they don't just build for gamers, but they build for like serious business applications and content creators and game devs too. Oh, like the same people that had their Threadripper workstation named one of the best products of 2024 by PC Mag? Yeah, I think they're also the ones that include a three year warranty and one year of overnight service. Aren't they also the ones that really like Reese and- Guys, guys, all of these things are true. You're thinking about the same people. They're the ones that give you Falcon Fuel coffee with your order. Let me explain. We've had plenty of Falcon Northwest PCs come through this office, from the Talon to the Fragbox to the Tiki. We've seen their custom prints in action and we've got to experience their delicious Falcon Fuel coffee. All those things that Michael and Kyler were saying are true. They've been around for decades because they prioritize the community and their customers customers by giving you great warranties as well as exceptional customer service and just little extra goodies like the coffee mug and the coffee that comes with your PC. They can make a PC that's designed to your specifications on the inside and then also on the outside and then they'll make you feel good about it. And if you want to get a print of your long lost coworker who happens to live on the other side of the world, they might be able to do that. Just get consent first. So now that you've heard everything about Falcon Northwest, check them out for yourself and upgrade to the most solid PC you'll ever own via the link in the description below. Well, maybe if this GPU comes out, Falcon Northwest might incorporate it into one of their PCs, the RX 9070 XT, XTX, not quite sure, 32 gigabyte edition. There's reports coming out of a Navi 48 XTW GPU, which is not quite clear what nomenclature that would go along with in terms of what it would end up at retail. But the reports are that this is gonna be part of the pro lineup with 32 gigs of VRAM for anybody who's poo-pooing the 16 gigs that you're getting in the current 9070 and 9070 XT. You might be able to get a little bit more in the pro lineup moving forward. And Nintendo is moving moving forward with the pre-orders of the Switch 2. This happened on Friday after we'd already filmed hot news, but the Switch 2 had been delayed due to the ongoing tariff confusion that's been happening in the US. They were supposed to launch for pre-order last week. That didn't end up happening and they were mulling over any price changes that they needed to make. And according to Nintendo right now, the price of the Switch 2 is remaining unchanged at $450 or $500 if you get it bundled with Mario Kart World. With the pre-orders going live in 
just two days on April 24th. The release date is staying the same. The only thing that has changed is the accessory prices have gone up. The Joy-Con 2 pair will cost you $95. The Pro Controller is going to cost you $85 and the various other accessories such as their camera, etc. are going up in price as well. So it looks like they're using the cost of the accessories to subsidize the cost of the main console, making it so that it's easier to get into it up front and not passing off the burden of the tariffs onto the consumer at first for their initial purchase into the ecosystem. But that ecosystem is a little weirder than you think it is because Nintendo, as they're doing all of this, has scrubbed the mention of variable refresh rate support from some of their websites, especially when it comes to putting it on compatible TVs. According to the way it was previously, you'd be able to play in 4K HDR with variable refresh rate up to 120 FPS. Now it's only uh, HDR and 120 FPS on a television, according to Nintendo's own website. So it's not quite clear exactly what's going on, why they've been scrubbing it. They haven't made a public statement with regards to uh, whether or not it is going to support VRR on the TV. As far as I'm aware, it supports VRR on the console still, but not on uh, when you plug it into the dock and then display on your television. But hopefully Reese can save you a few dollarinos to afford that increased price on the Joy-Con 2. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And hey, I'll jump straight into the deals for you guys, starting off with this Autobox 15 watt MagSafe wireless charging stand, which you can pick up for only $14.95, making it $85 off. But the next up, we have the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless gaming headset, available for only $84.99, making it $64 off. And then lastly today, we have the Seagate Firecuda 520N. This 2230 NVMe M.2 SSD is the little guy that you can put in your Steam Deck for extra storage, and is currently going for only $92.39 for the one terabyte version. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, here's the deal when it comes to Intel. After having a whole lot of kind of mum situations when it comes to their ARC GPUs, it's been months, honestly, of them not really discussing a whole lot and there not being a whole lot in the rumor mill going on with Intel's upcoming GPUs. All at once, in a single day, we got so much more information than I'm used to when it comes to Intel's ARC graphics card. So, number one is an official statement from Intel right now. They said in a forum post that they are indeed looking into the CPU overhead issues that are going on with the ARC B580 and that they've increased their platform coverage to include more configurations in their validation process and are continuing to investigate optimization. So it looks like Intel is continuing to work on B580, potentially making it more compatible with lower end CPUs, which some people might partner a $250 graphics card with a lower end CPU. So this would be good for them. They're also allegedly gonna be announcing a new boost feature for their core Ultra 200 series on desktop, allegedly 7% higher gaming performance for the three of you who watch Hot News who happen to have a core Ultra 200 series desktop setup. This might actually get you some better performance especially as it rolls out to BIOSes from the major motherboard vendors sometime soon. What also might be happening sometime soon is an update to the ARC graphics in Celestial. There's been a job posting indicating that Intel is indeed looking to put GDDR7 on future ARC products just based on a Canadian job posting that happened four days ago. It's just good to know that they're working on it, that Celestial's being developed. That's kind of really all I have to say about the next architecture generation of Celestial. So let's stick to battle image and what we currently have because there's a lot going on there as well. We've talked previously about how there was potentially a 24 gig B580 coming out as well as there was rumors swirling that the higher end B770 or B750 may have been canceled. So let's go ahead and talk about those right now because we got details on that. So speaking to the B770, the higher end GPU, the BMG G31 chip as it's known colloquially has been spotted on a shipping manifest, which is not something that we have seen before, and it looks like they're at least moving a B770 somewhere. Whether or not that's for validation purposes, or this is going to be potentially for retail in the future, it's not quite clear, but it is existing in the wild, which is something that we haven't seen 
four months, seeing that Intel does still have this higher end Battle Mage card and that it is in a shipping manifest, meaning they're disclosing it. We're not quite clear what that will inevitably mean for consumers, but I just know speaking for me and my community, we would love to see a B770 that absolutely comes in and has uh, its way with the mid tier market because the B580 is doing that with the entry level, as long as you have a competent uh, CPU, the a B770 could absolutely do some damage to Nvidia and AMD's market share, at least in my opinion. But then there's also reports on the B580 24 gig. You got Sparkle, one of the AIB partners for Intel, coming out and saying that a 24 gig Arc B580 has been in the works. It was supposed to be planned for a May slash June launch, but it's not quite clear if that's actually gonna happen. This is officially from Sparkle. However, Sparkle came out and then denied it. It's Sparkle Taiwan refuted the claim, and then they had to come out and say, oh, actually it wasn't Sparkle Taiwan, it was Sparkle China, but it's still false. However, it's not quite clear exactly what's going on there because Sparkle did actually make the claim. They're just now backpedaling and saying that it's not true, potentially because they preempted whatever Computex announcement Intel may have for their GPUs. So after weeks and months of basically getting no information on Intel's Battle Mage cards, we now have some a lot coming out at once. I'm looking forward to see if we get more details on the B770, B580 24 gig, and then potentially Celestials coming out sometime, hopefully sooner rather than later. But what did come out already, we had some videos come out over the weekend in case you want to check them out. On Saturday, we released our IN Neo 3 review with its magic modules. You can check that out as well as our RX 9070 BIOS mod video where we got to be able to turn the 9070 into a 9070 XT with a very simple hack. It is honestly incredible. Highly recommend you go check out that video in case you're interested in getting one of those GPUs. With that being said, I'm, I'm done with this episode of Hot News. I should be back with more of the hottest tech news for you tomorrow, my friends.